about 40 years ago, some four decades, when I was very young and quite frankly very spiritually ignorant, trying to learn the ways of God. I prayed to God that I would have a scriptural basis for what he wanted me to do in life. And he took me to Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And he specifically pointed out to me verse 9. And it says this, For this reason we also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full, deep, and clear knowledge of his will, and all spiritual wisdom and comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God, and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things. And I've lived by that for, through all these years. I had no idea why God took me there. It was a passage I'd never spent any time in. So I began to spend some time in spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding, comprehensive insight into the ways of God. And then one day as I read the word, the Bible said, God revealed his ways to Moses, but he showed his acts to the children of Israel. He revealed his ways, the way he does things. So what is that? That's understanding. I mean, behind me, you have all of this equipment and our video department does such an awesome job of taking things that we do here and they capture them and they turn on the editing machine and they know exactly how to get the lighting right, get the sound right, raise it, lower it, increase the light, decrease the light. I don't really understand this. I don't understand this machine. I, I, I don't understand how it works. So, so I look at it and I appreciate it. I understand what it's for. But in order to understand it, I would have to take it apart and get inside to look at it. I used to do that with my toys when I was a kid. My dad would buy me a toy, and it would do all kinds of things. It would stand up and twirl around. And then I would get a screwdriver, and I would take it apart because I wanted to know why it does what it does. That's understanding. Understanding in the Bible is getting to the core of something, the center of it, the heart of it, so that you have comprehension of what it is that causes the dots to be connected, understanding. And then he says in this passage, that you may walk and live and conduct yourselves in a worthy manner of the Lord, fully pleasing him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper and clear insight, acquaintance, and recognition that you will be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory. He wants us to be steadfast. The word steadfast as found in 1 Corinthians when it says, be ye steadfast. And the word here, invigorated with all strength, is a picture of a runner in a race, a marathon. And in that marathon race, eventually the body comes to the point of exhausting its available energy. And the runner begins to slow down, gasp for breath. We actually call those moments when we do that, as we push through, we call getting it a second wind, getting a second breath. But what happens there is the body made a demand on the energy stored in the fat cells and demanded that they release that energy. Now, that won't be released unless you push through the moment. And what that tells me is we have to have an understanding of what God is taking us through. God does not take you to things. He does not take you into things. He brings you through things. And he gives you understanding. One day as I finished eating breakfast, it was over on Alexis Road and I'd left Bob Evans. Had a nice waffle. Their waffles are so good. Boy, I could use one of those right now. And I left and I started up the road and, and, and got to the first red light. And I just read an article in USA Today that talked about a man who had paid one and a half million dollars for a seat on the stock exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. It would remain in his family. He could pass it on to a, a family member. And I remember thinking to myself, I couldn't get my mind off that. Somebody paid a million and a half dollars for a seat. And suddenly I felt in my spirit God speak to me. And he said, I paid more than that for your seat in my kingdom. I gave my son for you. And he gave his life so you would have a seat and you could be seated beside my son in heavenly places. I don't have full understanding of that, but I want to. So no matter what you're going through right now, no matter where you've been, no matter the hell that you've come through or that you're in at this moment, I'm telling you, God has a place for you in his kingdom. You can be seated beside Jesus Christ and you can enjoy what he purchased for you.